Hello, I am Dr. Emilia Bartolo and I'm a principal lecturer in chemistry at Canterbury Christ Church University in the section of Natural and Applied Sciences. In today's video, we are going to be making plastics out of potatoes. I've got a young scientist helping me today. His name is Daniel. Hello. Also, I don't believe that we can make plastics out of potatoes. Well, we most definitely can. But before starting the experiment, some health and safety announcements. Daniel will be wearing his safety glasses. Can you put them on? Thank you and also an apron to prevent any spills. And Daniel, do you have anything else you would like to say? Yes, I do. This experiment can be performed by people of all ages. However, if you're a child, please, we care for your safety, so only do this under adult supervision. Okay, Amelia, how do you make plastics out of potatoes mm -hmm. if it's even possible? It is possible. We're going to use something in potatoes called starch. Have you heard of it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Starch is made of glucose and sugar. Mm -hmm. So if you imagine these paper clips I've got here, and each of them are a unit of glucose, a molecule of glucose, when you have the glucose in a starch, you have it bonded in long chains, one to each, you know, one uh, to the other, and you make these long chains, and this is what we call a starch. We call these chains polymers, and we call each of the units that make the polymer, each of these units of glucose, monomers. Okay. So polymers are, are made of, uh, of monomers. And plastics, all plastics are polymers. And for example, fibers, that, the ones that make our clothes, are also polymers. The only difference is that you, you can use many monomers, not only glucose. Yes. When you have a starch, you actually have two types of polymers. One is called amylose, and it's these long chains I've got here of glucose bonded to each other. And we also have something called amylopectin, and this is an example of amylopectin. And the difference is that you have these branches coming off the coming off the chain. To make the plastic, we cannot use this one. We can only use the the long chains. So how do we get rid of the side chains? Mm -hmm. What we do is we use an acid. Malt vinegar. Yes, in this case, we're going to use malt vinegar. And what the acid does is that it breaks off the branches and leaves everything on nice chains of different lengths of glucose units. The plastic that you make from potato, the plastic that you make with the starch is called thermoplastic. Can you think of why that might be? Thermo means heat. Mm -hmm. So does it have something to do with heat? Yes, you make it uh, using heat. And you can actually make a plastic out of starch just by heating it up. But the problem is that when you heat it up, the, the different chains of the starch get very close together, so they kind of bond to each other and they, they become very tightly packed, and that makes the, the plastic you make is very brittle, it breaks very easily. So you need something to help them, yes, stay together, but so they keep a bit of a separation between them. And for that, you use something called a plasticizer. Glycerin? Mm -hmm. In this case, we are going to use glycerin. And what the glycerin does, and if you imagine these gold paper clips being the glycerin units, you see they insert themselves in between the chains to keep them slightly separated. Uh, so when they form the plastic, it's much more flexible. And you can actually play with the quantity of, of glycerin you are using to, you know, to make uh, plastics that are more or less flexible. So to make the plastic from potatoes, we're going to need potatoes. They don't have to be peeled, but wash them first to remove any dirt. And also glycerin. And we bought this in the pharmacy. It cost around a couple of pounds. We're also going to need vinegar. In our case, we're going to be using malt vinegar. You can use any vinegar you like. And we also have some food coloring just to give color our plast to our plastic. We're going to use a blender, and that is to blend the potatoes. You can use a grater instead. Ideally, we would be using a pestle and mortar, but we don't have any. So we are going to be grinding the potatoes with uh, some water using this bowl and a fork. We have here the, the, enough water for all the whole experiment. And we also have a jar, and we are going to collect 
the liquid that have strained from the potatoes in this jar by using this coffee filter. You can use um, a tea strainer if you prefer. We have some utensils like a knife to cut the potatoes, a teaspoon and a tablespoon to take several measurements and also a spatula that resists heat. And that is because we will need to put uh, the polymer to make it. We need to put the plastic uh, over uh, heat. And for that, we have here a pan. Additionally, uh, we have a bit of uh, grease proof pa paper to put the polymer once it's formed, to put the plastic once in form, it's formed. You can use uh, aluminum foil if you prefer. And we have uh, some cookie cutters to give it shape. You could try also ice cube, ice cube trays and put in the polymer in the ice cube trays if you want your uh, if you want it to have different forms. Okay, Daniel, you're going to take the potatoes and cut them in two or three pieces and put them in the blender. And the first step will be blending the potatoes and be very careful with the knife. Mm -hmm. These are approximately two hundred grams of potato. And now close the blender and we are going to blend them. So you've blended the potato, now you're going to transfer it to this bowl and you're going to put 100 milliliters of water. I've marked here uh, this plastic cup so you know how yeah. much you need to use. And then you're going to grind it with a fork for a few minutes and then you will be extracting the starch that was in the potatoes into the water. So around 100 milliliters. Got around 100 milliliters. Mm -hmm. And I'll press it well with a fork and stir it well. Make sure there's no splash. Uh -huh. And that's helping extract the starch from the potato and into the water. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm sure, Ginger, I believe that you can make plastics out of potatoes. Not yet, but soon we will. So now you are going to um, put the potato, you can use a spoon if you want to make, make your life easier. Put the potato inside the coffee filter. So the, the water comes, uh, you know, falls into the jar. Is this good enough? Yep. Yeah. You will have to do this three times. So uh, use the, no, no, use the spoon better, uh, better slowly. Okay. Uh huh. That will help. I'll press it a little bit. Very good. And now I'm going to help you. Yes. One more. Good. And I'm going to help you by moving all this water. You're going to have to do this several times. So. And now the starch is slowly coming out of the potato, into the liquid, into the water, and it will deposit at the bottom. You will see that um, when it just when the when the water settles, it will appear at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. So now transfer again the potato back into the bowl, another 100 milliliters of water, and repeat the process again. So now you've done three times the grinding the potatoes with water and filter them through the coffee filter. And now you've got here uh, the water and at the bottom this white solid and that's the starch and that's what we want. I see it. So now we need to wash this starch, remove the this dirty water and wash it with a bit of clean water. Okay. So the first thing you're going to do is very carefully 
try not to disturb the the powder at the bottom pour off the the water into for example this bowl we say this decant you are decanting the liquid because what you want is the solid at the bottom you don't have to take off all the water leave a little bit if you see that you are you begin to to lose the starch and then you're going to wash it with another 100 milliliters of clean water and stir it with a spoon and you leave it set for a few minutes and that will be our our starch clean and ready to use okay come on so very carefully try not to not, not start the the starch at the bottom mm -hmm. very good so we don't want the water we're just collecting it here uh-huh oh come on good and now add some clean water very good and then just stir it with a spoon to make sure that uh, that it's clean And make sure that look at the bottom just to make sure that it's not stuck at the bottom that you're really cleaning it mm -hmm. very good so now we're going to let it rest for a few minutes to let the starch settle at the bottom again and then we will pour off this water and we'll have our, our starch ready to, ready to use. Okay. So you can leave that starch dry if you want to and use it at another time. Or you can use it straight away, which is what I normally do. Okay. So how much would we need of water? Eight tablespoons. Eight tablespoons. What about two, the glycerol? Two teaspoons and two teaspoons for the malt when it goes. Mm -hmm. And then you can add as much food coloring as you want to make it the color you want. Okay. So my first suggestion would be that you add uh, the eight tablespoons and you add them straight into the jar, and then we can stir this well and just just to make sure that we all the we transfer all the starch from here into the pan. Okay. So um, you can, for example, first add the first four. Mm -hmm. And now we stir it well. Hang on a minute. And we pour it into the pan. I thought we were going to add eight. Tablespoons. Yes, and now we add another four here to make sure. And then we're trying to make sure that all the, the starch transfers from the jar. Do we put it here again? Okay. One, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. This is not something we normally do in the lab. You know, we, we want to make sure that all the starch moves from the jar into the pan. So, uh-huh. Very good. So now we don't need the jar anymore. Or the, or the water anymore. So we move it away. And now we need... What are you going to add first? The malt vinegar or the glycerol? Let's do the glycerol. Mm -hmm. Measure it on top of the on this small plate. Never measure on top of what you are preparing because if you make a mistake or you add too much, then it will ruin what you are uh, what you are preparing. So, uh huh. Let it, and you can actually even stir it a little bit so it cleans well. Good. Another uh -huh. one. Uh huh. Very good. And now you do the same with the vinegar. And the second one. Uh huh. And now you can stir it a little bit with the with the, with the um, tablespoon. Uh -huh. 
And now add food coloring as you know until you get the color you you want. You can add a few drops and stir or not, you can add a lot. <laughs> the color is not oh nice, really nice color. Uh-huh. I think that's the color that's the color you like? Yes. So now as you notice I'm going to lift this. Can you see it is very liquid? Yes. So at the moment you have all the ingredients, all the chemicals for your uh, for your polymer, for your plastic here. And now you just need to um, uh, we need heat to combine all the all the yes. strands of um, of a starch together and because, make the polymer. Because it's a thermoplastic. Because it's thermoplastic, we need heat. So now we have to go into the kitchen. So Daniel, we I'm going to turn on the heat. And then you're going to start the stirring and we'll be holding the pan just to make sure that it's safe and it will be at very low heat so it's going to take a few minutes it, will, it starts very liquid and then at some point it becomes um, slightly thicker it becomes almost like toothpaste and you have to continue stirring for a few minutes more until it becomes very gloopy and thick and then is when you can take it off the the pan and we're going to put it here in a sort of thick layer, not very thin. And then we can maybe cut a few shapes and see if we can make you some toys made of your own plastic. Are you ready? Okay. Okay, I'm going to turn on the heat. And I'm going to start stirring. Do it slowly so you don't splash mm -hmm. and I will hold the pan for you. So since you have made a lovely red color, would you like to try making um, a strawberry okay. with, a, with this um, ice cube tray? Okay. So now let me show the, the consistency in, to the camera. So, uh, so as you can see, it's quite um, gloopy and thick. And now uh, I'm going to turn off the heat. And if you can transfer maybe with a small spoon, you think it would be easier with a small spoon? Probably. We transfer it, you transferred some to the um, careful because it's very hot to one of the strawberries and fill it in. You can use the, the little spoon to spread it a little bit so it's flat. And now hang on a minute, with the rest we can try putting it on. Yes, I'm going to move this out the way one second I put it here. And then, yep, put it here with a spoon. And we spread it a little bit. It is a really lovely color. And when it cools down, it starts setting, so um, it's a bit. Um, it's a bit of a time-dependent uh, operation. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me get the spoon. Sorry, so I can, I can rescue. Okay. So, so um, let's make some nice edges so we don't have a lot of spider uh, plastic. Help you. Okay, so I'm going to leave it a bit of a shape. Uh huh. And and now we will have to let it dry for at least a day to make sure that it settles well. And hopefully, in twenty four hours, we will have our beautiful red plastic.
We hope you have enjoyed this video and we hope you have lots of fun making biodegradable polymers using starch. Thank you very much to Daniel for his help. Bye everyone!